What's up everybody? Welcome to the stream. Today I'm working on Mac force feedback, controller rumble, and all that. Um, I've successfully got it working on Windows and Linux. Yeah, yeah. So today's gonna be Mac. Um, I'm already partly through through the hard stuff already, actually. Got to figure out which freaking APIs I'm supposed to be even using. I had no idea. What's up, Salad? Yeah, it's IO Kid Day. I'm doing some IO Kit force feedback stuff. So just to review what I did earlier this morning, I figured out which freaking API to use, which was um, <clears throat> here when it creates, this is kind of, it's actually using the, um, the OIS library I'm using here is uh, actually using some obsolete methods from IO Kit but they work still. So I'm not gonna go change everything, but I did just kind of hook into it. Where the hell did I? Uh, oh, it's in hit manager. There it is, okay. So this is the function you have to call the, the, um, the uh, what do you call it? The framework you have to use is force feedback. So you have to include force feedback in your project, and then you can include the header file force feedback. Right? Yes, I'm. I'm starting to realize the pain that you went through because you're right. The documentation is not that good for this. Like, there's all these broken links. The first thing I found this morning was like this link. It was like, click here for some some like example code how to do a gamepad force feedback and it was just a broken link couldn't find anything in on on apple's site definitely lacking definitely lacking and then you get to things like i finally found this thing this whole force feedback set of functions and then there's little things like you can't like like i would really like to know what an ff effect is but you can't click on that there's no link to it anyways so it's kind of like shooting in the dark yeah, so that's, <laughs> come on, Apple, jeez. So, but anyways, this is the, this took forever just to find this, this function, and be able to call it with the right parameter, and so I'm so glad this got working right here. So this creates a force feedback device given your hid handle, or whatever, your IO service T, or your IO object T, or whatever you have from IO kit, you have an object pointer, uh, object like handle, or whatever, and you use that to create a force feedback device object reference thing. So there's that. So what I'm working on now is testing out the um, the force feedback part. So I've created a class and a file for all this Mac force feedback .cpp. I just based it on the Linux version, and luckily the Mac. Um, Mac, it looks like Mac created this whole library, force feedback, based on the Linux library. It's like very similar to how Linux does its force feedback too. There's like almost all the same cons, even the constants have the same values. Like there's the same exact like types of uh, force feedback effects. Everything is very very similar to Linux. So that's that's cool too. So here I am. This function, when it instantiates a Mac force feedback, I'm just going and just trying to do some a force feedback effect I'm running into an error already though yeah BSD totally yeah so what are you working on today salad just confirm this I'm pretty sure this is re resulting in an error super positive die harders what's up Result is, yeah, this is a negative result. It's like it hasn't been flushed yet. Okay, so we're getting the error. Um, an invalid parameter is passed to the returning function, or the object was not in a state that admitted the function to be called. You been lazy? Nice. Yeah, on vacation. Right on, man. Cool. What are you doodling? 
if you don't mind me asking. Okay, so I got to figure out whether it's so it's either either an invalid parameter, which that's probably really likely, or the object was not in a state that admitted the function to be called. I wonder if there's something you got to do before you call create effect. Probably not this. Wonder if they have Oh, okay, so this is SDL's version. And they're calling get supported features, but the, the this is pretty important. Maybe this is it. They're resetting the device and setting the actuators on. And then it's creating some effects. Hey, what's up, Base? Yeah, what's up, man? Just started the stream. An Argonian lizard man. Sweet, man. Awesome. Okay, let's see if this was it. Maybe they had to create, do these calls to the, to the thingamajigger. <laughs> do some things here to the thingamajigger. Ah. Ah, da 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 da. Setting up Emacs, cool. CMake IDA, sweet. Nice, right on. Yeah, that's great. Gosh, I need to find something like that for Vim. All right, so MFF device, we're gonna call the reset command. If result is not equal to FFOK, do I have the log command here? No, I don't have log. It's log, it's log. Oh, R tags, huh? Wait, what's an AST again? Hey, what's the so what's the like what's the one sentence version on? Oh, the compiler's way of understanding your code. Abstract syntax tree. So it's like almost like it parses your code, and the AST is like the somewhat parsed version. So what? So tell me what you think about what's the difference between like C tags and R tags. In a nutshell, what's the... Uh, 
Okay, so we can make a, a little static function. to process the errors. Mm -hmm. It represents your code in parse form. Yeah. Oh, so what's your, what's the, um, what's like a simple description of like, what's the difference between R tags and C tags in your opinion? Like what would, why use R, -T R tags versus C tags? There we go. Okay, so we've got an is error function. We're going to reset the device. Now we're going to send another force feedback command. Set actuators on. Okay, let's find out if those two things enable it to work. Uh huh. For one, I heard C tags is slow. Okay. Still, we got the invalid bear parameter. Okay. So it looks like. It didn't need to be reset, didn't need to have its actuators on or whatever. It's just that it, it was an invalid parameter. I'm kind of liking the way this SDL code is helping me out here, though. Thanks, SDL code. Get supported features. more accurate oh oh okay because it gets it right straight from the compiler versus like c tags kind of like part does its own parsing you're saying <clears throat> Oh, here we go. Yeah. So, uh, find a solution that let, lets Emacs do syntax checking. Ah, uh, with Unity builds. Okay. What's up, Zonoth? Are you using any libraries? Yeah, tons of them, man. Yeah, I'm using C++, and um, the big library I'm using is Cocos 2DX. It's a game engine. I'm also using FMOD, um, Steam's library, um, OIS, this input library. Ah, yeah. It's cool, Salad. You're going to have a cool setup. Okay, we can look and find out which one of these things are available. This is be a this would be a really good thing to do. So let's do this.
Quick and dirty, doing this dirty, super dirty coding. I would be editing this in actually in Vim, but I'm using a lot of different uh, platform specific stuff where I just want to like quickly jump to this and I, can't, I haven't got Vim set up so I can look at like platform frameworks yet. Is it easy to develop to iPhone and Coco Studio X? Oh, that's a that's a really um that's totally relative to how familiar you are with iPhone and how familiar you are with C and also how familiar you are with the general Cocos um, way of doing things. Cocos has nodes for everything. So like a sprite is a node, uh, a layer is a node, a scene's a node, everything's a node. So uh, it's relatively easy, yes, but it, that's what I would consider because I have so much experience with C++ and Cocos and iPhone. So, but anyways, if you don't have much experience with those, I wouldn't recommend Cocos because it's, I don't know, I guess you could say it's more of an intermediate type of engine because you've really got to, it's a DIY style co engine for sure. You pretty much have to be a DIY kind of person to use Cocos. You, you have to prefer source code over something like Unity that's like a software that makes your game. Yeah, use a CMake to figure out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cocos is a, yeah, so yeah, the original Cocos 2D was beautiful. It was a lot more simple. It was a hell of a lot less bloated than Cocos 2DX, but Cocos 2DX is kind of bloated because it has to support like every platform. Um, so Salad, have you heard about Ninja? Ninja Build? Ninja Build is sick. I switched from CMake to Ninja. No, wait, sorry. Never mind. Sorry. CMake can use Ninja as well as Make. So, but if you have you have you heard of Ninja? Because you can set up your CMake to use Ninja instead of Make, and your builds would be so much faster. Make is slow. Yeah, you should definitely give Ninja a try. Seriously. Especially when you're on um, a little bit slower of systems and stuff like that. Like, for example, when I open up my VMware and I'm on Linux, the system's a little bit slower, you know? So using Ninja there is like a drastically faster than Make. But if, if you're just on your Mac or your regular computer, it might not be as drastically faster, but... Yeah, you can develop Android, Mac, Windows, Linux, iOS, um, and several other platforms. And you develop all those things with the same C++ code base. So you write your game code once, Cocos handles the rest, and put, you can put it on any platform. What's up, Rocket? So we're going to call this FF device get force feedback capabilities function and list out what is act, what this thing is actually capable of doing. So I can see, so what I'm running into right here is um, I think I'm passing an invalid parameter to the create effect function. So I want to see which effects are actually supported. So we get supported equals zero. Uh, 
Ah, okay, all right, so we just want to go if. Hmm. We want to be able to push these back into like the list of supported effects. Yeah, it's very code centric. You crunch the numbers, right? It's unbelievable. One dollar a day with Bitcoin mine mining. Oh, yeah. And you'd probably be spending more than that in electricity. I know you really don't think about how much electricity costs, but electricity costs. Think about this. Every time you plug something in and you're using electricity, just the light that's running right here, the computer that you're running, you're essentially burning coal. Like 80% of our in our power here in the United States or something like that. That's, don't quote me on the number. But it is a, a great percentage of it call, comes from coal. Okay, so this is testing things and adding its own feedback things. Um, I want to do, I want to push back to the, it's FF joystick or it's, yeah, OS joystick. It's got this function called, see joystick? Maybe it's not joystick. No, it must not be joystick. It's, What's the thing where it sets it's what it's supported? Oh, I guess I need the Win32 version up and open the Win32 version. Yeah, that's great, Rocket. Yeah, Europe is so much farther ahead of us in like converting its power. I wish we were farther, but we're getting better. We're getting better. There's a lot more you know, wind turbines and solar power, things like that. Even the new nuclear like plants that we're starting to develop are a hell of a lot better than burning coal. The new nuclear plants are sick. They like they can burn things for so much longer. They can recycle old waste materials from other nuclear reactors. They don't have to be changed out as much, so there's like significantly way less risk as far as a meltdown. Um, anyways, we're getting there. Okay, there's something where I set up like, oh, here, support this, set this device, is, allows this thing. What the MFF device? Add effect support. I think that might be it. Somber Taco, we can also make nukes with it. Oh, yeah. There's a pretty interesting documentary on all of it. It's called something like, uh, it was all about nuclear power. I forget what the, I forget what it was called, though. Oh, man. E4s, add effect types, is this it? What's this one? Add effect types. I think this is it. Oh, yes. 
Force feedback. Ah, here it is. So you need to inherit from force feedback. Okay, so macforcefeedback.h is a force feedback. So it can call that function. All right, so if, um, what do we got here? Features dot supported effects and um, constant force. Then we would go this add effect types. This is E force effect. I guess it's just effect constant force. That's an E force, yeah, and then an E type. I don't know what type it is. Might be just constant um, effect constant e type. Yeah, let's see about that. Let's see if that even works, eh? All right, so we're going to be testing out this stuff. Have you tried using elementary with two monitors? No, I don't have two monitors. I wish I did. Um, or there's also the possibility of, of making nuclear reactors with thorium, which has no, um, which cannot be weaponized. So that's also a huge thing, right? If we can, India is working on it really hard and also so is China. They're working on ways to basically create nuclear power plants that run on thorium. They're safer. Um, because they can't be weaponized, but they also are super duper way more abundant than plutonium. So good, we got the capabilities. The number of effects is, I think this is going to be a huge number. There's 256 of them. There's one playing. Okay, so do we support a constant force? Yes, we do. All right. Okay. Let's go through this and add on what effects are supported. Let's see what kind of constants we got to support here. Constant force, ramp force, custom force. We don't have periodic force. Son of a biatch. Fusion reactors, yeah, if we can figure that out. Yeah, fusion react, but fusion reactors are kind of far off in the future, it seems to me. Yeah. Yeah. It could be possible, though, and thank God we got things like the, the whole, um, uh, what's the super collider called in Switzerland? Oh, CERN. Okay, but this kind of sucks. There's no periodic force. Uh, <laughs> well, that explains why it didn't. <laughs> it wasn't working. We can't do periodic. Wait, wait, what? I know that it had the whole. It had periodic. Oh. I guess there's no periodic force. Blam, blam, blam. Yeah, solar is still getting still a long ways off. But solar for like um your own individual home, 
is totally possible if you're if you're willing to change the way you kind of live so you live a lot more efficiently or if we could create smarter homes that use less power because we waste so much power as you know we we do we waste a shitload of power i've lived on my own boat before where i had to create all my own power from solar and i was able to live just fine by doing um you know i put up two 85 watt solar panels on top of my boat and that was only 160 watts of power. You can get a shitload more than that for a home. And I was able to live and, you know, I wasn't able to splurge on electricity, especially in the winter. In the winter, I had to really conserve. And sometimes I had to go to shore just to, like, get power to code that day. But um, it's totally possible to live on your own power with solar as long as you're more efficient about what you do. You're not as wasteful. Heat savings, yeah. And then there, and there, if you're making smarter homes with you know better insulation and the whole um, what are they called? Those smart, not the smart homes, but like uh, I don't know. Really, their electricity evaporates off transmission lines. Whoa, I didn't know that. Do you mean do you mean that we lose it in the in the resistance as it goes from one transformer to another it like a little bit goes away because of the resistance or does it actually evaporate I don't how does it evaporate a server in the walls and it warm the house up yeah there you go passive that's what it's called passive homes you develop your your walls are like way thicker. You have this all this like foam in, inside the walls. The windows are way more. Um, the windows can try you know keep whatever temperature and heat in. Heat death. Oh, uh, okay. Huh. Never knew that. Okay, so I'm wondering, are all these... Okay, we have ramp force. Okay, what we should do is make a vector of effect e-forces and another vector of types And then we go, um, if we support constant force, then push that back to the forces. And then later on, we can push all these back. Company installs radiators in people's homes that are actually servers to do number crunching. Hmm. Sweet. Vacuum decay. What's that? <laughs> I like existing. It's about the Higgs field being in a false vacuum. Huh. Hmm. Okay, so if we support, what are these other ones? We've got constant, let's just copy all these. Constant force, ramp force. Hold on. Does this have anything about periodic? It does. Oh, triangle is a periodic. Hmm. 
Tasks I give. How long to complete a task? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone's not working on random shit. Uh. <laughs> oh, this is great. Rage quit. Buy a bar. <laughs> Oh. Living on the street. <laughs> uh, he death of the universe. Uh, uh. Serve farms using the heat. Oh yeah, that's cool. The universe isn't actually a stable vacuum. Huh. Whoa. Ah, you seem way taller. Does the present exist or is there only past and future? How about there's only present? There's no such thing as the past or the future. If like, so I think of time like a hologram and it's a bunch of nows and everything is just now, 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 now. And so, all the the past and all the future all simultaneously exist and so everything is just a little now i don't really understand what the hell i'm trying to say here that's kind of what I, my feeling is on the matter the present is the past because there's a latency from information in your eye traveling through your optic nerve huh interesting Okay, we got constant ramp, custom. And then, so we did constant ramp. Custom. Now we got all these square, sign, triangle, sawtooth, spring, damper, inertia, and friction. So we'll start with square types, pushback, effect square. For tall people, it's even longer. <laughs> oh, yeah.
triangle sawtooth, sawtooth, spring, damper, inertia, friction. Spring? Oh, is it? Is this? A, do we have one of those? Oh wow! Got one of those. Damper. Damper. Oh my God! There's a damper too. Inertia. Friction. All those. Okay, well, it looks like we can do all these, but we're not having the freaking periodic floors. But that might just be that it's not listed or periodic is considered already like a one of these other ones, constant or ramp or something, or custom. Is there a state of currently occurring that is itself distinct from past and future? Hmm. Huh, if it was a binary system. Huh. So you're saying zero equals the past and one equals the future? And you're what? Well, if by then, by definition, there's no such thing as the present. That's a deep stream, right? Totally. What if zero is the present and one is both the past and the future? I'm just going to go ahead and push back some supported effects. Before that runs, let's see what we got. An infinite amount of units between. Mm hmm. Okay, what forces do we have? Three types of forces constant, ramp, and custom. We've also got square, sine, triangle, and sawtooth. Got triangle. Okay, so now we've got those. Dirty coding today, super dirty. Oops. Okay, so this is like listing the supported effect. Okay, so it comes down to this. Still, we should be able to create an effect. And there's a show about people smoking weed and watching ancient aliens. Man, I should have been on that show. I think I was pretty high when I watched ancient aliens every single time. That's such a great show. It all makes so much sense. Here's something to try. What if it's just the freaking axis? Could just be the axis. Let's say we have one axis. Can we create the effect then? 
We're doing effect type triangle. We know we have a triangle effect that's possible. How do you nail down now on the infinite scale? That's right? Yeah, if it's if it's infinite, then the whole present. I see what you're saying about the whole the present moment being in its own infinity. It's just like um, monads and um, what's the new name for a monad? Um, infinitesimals. Infinitesimals are sweet. One divided by an infinitesimal is infinity. I love that concept. Watching ancient aliens makes for some amazing drinking games. <laughs> I bet. I've not tried it, but I bet it's awesome. Okay, what did we get? Result? Come on, tell me it's like it's result is good this time. Damn it, it's not. Okay, so if you're tuning into the stream, what I'm trying to do is get force feedback to work on Mac, and I'm running into a little error trying to create an effect, invalid parameter, or the object's not in a state where it's ready for it's probably see what oh I'm giving it a type specific parameter periodic but I don't see anywhere where I'm specifying that this is a periodic effect unless this is, would be here a triangle sine square ramp constant This is where the documentation for this sucks. Maybe we'll just try a constant force. Yeah, let's try a constant force first. Okay, constant force it is. Dirty code, super dirty code. This is how I code when I don't know what I'm doing. I code it super dirty because I don't care. Don't care how good it is or good it looks. Okay, this time we're going to do a constant force effect. The human brain are conscious and how our brains help us to try to think that we're in a way permanent. What's up, Lime? How you doing, Lime? Oh, Veritasium, our greatest delusion. I'll have to watch that one later on. Veritasium is pretty cool. I know, right? I'm, I'm actually really lucky that actually this library has written most of the stuff for me. And I'm actually pretty lucky to look at SDL and see that they're doing it already too. SDL. Okay, so this is going to be, we're not going to be filling up that. And let's just do a constant force thing. All right, let's see what happens. Come on. You did too? So Lime, how you been, man? What's been new? Oh, result negative again. So I'm, I'm just not, I'm not passing the right parameters in. Yeah, same exact error. Okay, well, let's look at SDL's code some more. Yeah, I know, right? I hate writing dogs too. Okay, let's pay attention to how SDL does this. Maybe there's something in here. You know what? Can I just like copy this? Haptic Darwin. Yeah, I should download this code. This is SDL 205. 
Mm hmm. The mappings. Bunch of strings to find out each how to treat each different controller mapping as though it's an Xbox. Nice. Oh, 205 is the current version. Oh yeah, in control. Second in your life where there's been a Christmas without at least a third. Oh. Poor Rocket. So Rocket, do you miss do you miss Holland or do you you getting used to it here or what? Where was this again? Source. Source haptic Darwin. Okay, that's better. Much easier to read. You getting used to it? Oh, I know, man. Your old friends, your old Friday game jams, the pizza. Oh. Okay, I know I already have the IO thing. I got the force feedback. Definitely don't have it already. Oh, retain it? Oh, I didn't retain it. Come on with us. Cash it. Uh, no, I'm not using SDL. <laughs> You're now us. Nice one. Maybe I need to retain this thing. Let's go back to the hit manager. It doesn't like that. Oh, that is force feedback device. Okay, wait, I don't think I need to call this retain. This is part of the device. Okay, that's the IO device. This is already handled by its OIS. Uh, what am I doing? What parameters am I passing in wrong here? What am I doing wrong? Got the supported features.
here's some stuff we can use for setting the, the master gain. Here's some stuff for setting auto center. Hopefully that isn't needed to be done. Well, I should try this. This might be needed before. Oh, that's just getting the property. Okay, I guess we don't need to do that. Okay, so here's the create device. And then get supported features. And then send the reset command, send the actuators on command. Both of these have confirmed are working, and I did those. Allocating effect memory. Whoa. Okay, so what do we do next? Here's our FF effect. We're setting a direction. Uh, maybe this, spherical. This is if we don't have any axes, we're just setting spherical. Maybe that's what we need. Let's try that. Flags, spherical. Uh. Let's try that. No, it didn't work. Boo hoo. Still the same error. Hmm. Okay, continue the search for what the hell parameter needs to be set here. Hmm. Okay, so we got a bunch of this is where it looks like it's it's crafting the whole FF effect array or struct Oh getting the number of axes is pretty important Yeah, let's look up how to get that Oh, it's right here in features. Okay, so when we're first all Doing this stuff, the number of axes, where does it set this? I think it's in force feedback.h. 
every well not that force feedback dot h oh yeah let's go to this one yeah here we go do you have a number of axes oh yeah it's got its own set number of axes function I think no it doesn't Hmm. Oh, we should check that. We've got set gain support. Oh, this is oh, this is implemented per platform. Okay. So Win32 joystick. No, Win32 force feedback. Yeah, number of axes. Okay, so let's get that. Put that in our Mac. Force feedback dot h. Okay, and then when we're constructing. Okay, so MFF axes equals that. And then we can also test whether we support master gain. Is there Did I skip force feedback property from FF device FF prop FF gain val what was val again? I think val was an unsigned. Void pointer. Okay, so we don't need to really test this error. So that equals FF OK. Then M support set gain support equals true. Right? Yeah, it should be the same kind of thing for the the auto center mode. Ah, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Mac controller rumble. This has been the most time consuming one of them all. Well, I guess Linux was already finished and Windows was super easy because X inputs, super easy function call.
Okay, so let's see what those two functions return. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so we've got set gain support and set auto center support. Okay, well, that's good to know. Well, what next? I guess we could try setting master gain. See what that does. One thing at a time. Have to gain. Uh, there's the haptic set gain. All right, so if we don't support set gain, we'll just return. Otherwise, we have we have a float value, so we should do um, just if we don't even need to call this is there if of device set force feedback property on. MFF device set the property gain to whatever value is and we'll do um, what kind of number should that be avoid uh, no what's again a void pointer and of the correct type what is the turret type supposed to be? A UN32 for the gain, a UN32 for the auto center. All right. There we go. Now we're setting the maximum gain. Maybe that works. Hopefully that works. Set a breakpoint to see if it's even being called. I think it is being called. Maybe this is one of those things that just have to be done before the you can create an effect. I don't know. Such great documentation. What does unsigned do? Unsigned is just like a regular integer, except that it's it's it doesn't have a sign. So it's not it's um, a signed integer, for example, is negative 2 billion to 2 billion, positive. So an unsigned integer is 0 to 4 billion. So basically, an unsigned integer value has one more bit that it can use. And, well, they're both using the same amount of bits. It's just that one, one bit is, in a, in a signed integer value, one of the bits is reserved for whether it's positive or negative. So that's why you get negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion for signed integers and 0 to 4 billion for unsigned integers. Okay, so are we hitting that function? No, it's never being called. Let's call it from... I thought, wait, I thought this was being called set master gain. I called that from input. Yeah, here. 
Oh, are we not even returning the dough? Query interface. Query interface. Got to query the interface. The more you know. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Feel free to ask any kind of question along the way if you're like, what's a const? You know, or whatever. Ask away. I'm happy to answer. I love code. I love code, man. It's a beautiful thing to me. Okay, so we need to, I think in Mac Joystick, so I'm using somebody else's library here. I'm kind of trying to code the way their library works, which is kind of uncomfortable for me, but um, you just kind of got to do it this way. I think here we got a, we got a query interface function, or we should have a query. Yeah, here it is. There you go. Yeah, so if we've got the force feedback device, no, that's MFF device, and we're querying for type force feedback, then return it. Otherwise, return zero. There. Okay, so now, now we have a proper FF device being returned from the query, hopefully. Let's see. Now, if this does work, we're going to be able to get the function um, call set master gain. So we're just building up this little library for Mac one function at a time. Damn it. Didn't get it. Okay, well, let's set a breakpoint and figure out if, it's, if this query interface is even working. Right here. Explain why C++ bothers to distinguish between class and struct. That's a good one. Why do they bother, though? Well, first of all, we'll say what is the difference between a class and a struct. A struct is just a class. So both class classes and structs are just objects that can have member variables. And a class has all of its member variables and functions. So that's another thing, too. Classes and structs can both have member variables and they can have member functions. So the member functions are just functions, regular functions that operate on, that can operate on member variables. And um, classes and structs can also have static variables which are basically accessible to any instance of that class or struct. So, but the, so then the difference between the class and struct is that class has all of their member variables and functions by default private and um, the struct has all of its member variables and member functions by default public. So why do they bother distinguishing? <laughs> That's a great question. Why did, why I never thought about that. Why do they actually even bother distinguishing? I guess it's probably for syntactic syntactic sugar. It's just convenience when you it's more convenient to declare a struct and just have everything by default public or declare a class and have everything by default private. That's my guess. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Am I right? Just convenience. I can't think of, think of any other reasons why they would have had that. It's kind of like you don't even need class or you don't even need struct. Security? Yeah, but I mean, you could even if you even if you didn't even if you just had one, you would still be able to do public and private little, little prefix statements that would be able to do that for any either of those. So you, it's not really like you need both of them. Yeah, it's not a very good reason. There's a lot of things in C plus plus that are not great reasons, but it's because C plus plus is trying to be in like a an end-all be-all language. It's trying to solve everyone's problems. It's giving you a way to do things in so many different ways. That's one kind of the biggest problems with C++ is it's so bloated because it's trying to solve everyone's problems. Security by file. What's that? C-sharp. Structs are always passed by value. 
Oh, now that's... That's, whoa, that's a big difference. Dang, I didn't know that. It shows you what I know. If I started coding in C-sharp, I would make so many mistakes. Yeah, totally. Which I couldn't live without pointers and references. I can't, I couldn't operate in a language where that didn't allow me to distinguish those. Okay, let's see if this query works. Yay, we're right here. We should have the MFF device too. Yeah, we got that. So return it, sweet. So now we've got, can we cast it to a force feedback pointer? We should be able to force, yes, cool. So we can push back this device and call the force set master gain. Oh, cool. Oh, I just didn't have a breakpoint here. <laughs> okay. That's all it was. And did we get an error there? Let's see. Got an error, maybe? Check it out. Look at all these things it supports. Square, sine, triangle, sawtooth. Oh in multiple different types. Yeah, it's still giving the error. Womp, womp, womp. Wait, we're not calling this until after. Hmm. Oh, by default, you can, spec you can specifically say I want this pass by value. Oh. Huh, so what's next? What's next to get this working? Well, we could make a little steady progress here. Steady progress. I guess we can get, um, Set the auto center mode. So if we don't have set auto center support, return. Don't need a max gain for this. We're setting prop auto center, which should just take a bool value, I think. Let's see. How does it want this? Ah, wrong description. Point the p value member points to a UN thirty two could be zero or one. Oh, an application that uses force feedback should disable auto centering before playing effects. Okay, so that should be set to false when your default. So let's just make sure. I know this is super pedantic, but 
just doing if enabled use one otherwise use zero I know that actually casts that way anyways but um, Should I add in all this debugging boilerplate nonsense? Uh, I don't really want to. But maybe we'll do this at least. If it's an error, oh, we've already got that functionality. Uh, I don't want to do all this right now. I just wanted to get it to work. Okay, well, we got set master gain, set auto center mode. We should probably turn off auto center modes or auto center mode by default in input controllers. I should make sure that the Linux version still works with that off. Oh, it's probably just a freaking a couple parameters to this one function. It's, uh, it's got to be simple. I'll figure it out. We'll get to the right line of code and narrow it down. Just want to make sure this controller rumble still works by turning off that master or set auto center mode on Linux as well. Or maybe I should be setting it to false actually. Yeah, I should set it to false. Take it forever. Okay, open up the door. Yes, we got vibrate. Nice rumble. Cool. 
fades in, fades out. It's got a nice jitter to it. That's all we wanted. Very nice. Okay, confirmed. We can set that to false. Still works. Good to know. Plug my Mac my controller back in. Uh, wasn't long enough. Okay, that's good. Maybe that does that help on Mac? Probably not. Unless, oh, unless maybe I just call set auto center mode to false right when I create it. Before, that's, this could work, maybe. Ah, <sighs> one thing at a time. Come on, come on, come on. Function call is not supported at this time. It looks like set auto center mode is not supported, even though it said it is. Yeah, totally. It's not supported. That's weird. Why would it return? <laughs> return okay here. Well, maybe it's just this get force feedback property thing is actually. I can only get this working in the next seven minutes. Okay, doesn't matter. This is not important. Okay, somewhere in here. Let's try doing a, con well, wait, maybe not a constant feedback. Ooh, what are the other ones we have? Um, I forget. Somber, what's that? Does the game have a test suite? No, it does not. Force. Okay, we got constant, ramp, or custom. And then square, sine, triangle. So we'll be doing triangle. Triangle constant, I guess. Okay, let's try and get this set up how SDL is doing it. Have I used Google Test? No, I have not. 
There's update effect, new effect. There's the type. Oh, see, it does pass a type. Oh, this just gets... Yeah, this takes constant force, ramp, sign. Well, I want to do a triangle. Just to, let's keep this as triangle. So I know I know I can do this. Triangle ID. I have this feeling that periodic is what we need. Let's go back to my original code here. Okay. Triangle ID. Okay, well that's the type. Go back to new effect. What's it unlocking here? A haptic HW effect. This is their own class. Gets the type. Sys2 FF effect. And then we create the effect into the ref. That's it. So everything happens here in this SDL Sys2 FF effect function. So we set the size, the sample period. I got size. They set their sample period to zero. Oh, the axes. Google test. So what what do you what are the advantages of Google test? Why what do you what do you like about it? Okay, let's set our sample period to 0. Just like theirs. Um, set the gain to just something maxed. Magnitude, we've already got it to 10,000. Good. Flags. Ooh, did look at this. Seems obligatory. Object offsets. Yeah, unit testing. I wish there were better ways to write unit tests for games. I mean, I know there are. You can write unit tests for certain things for games, but there's a lot of things in games that you can't just write a unit test for. There's no way to look at like look at the screen and be like, okay, this screen has does it have a butterfly up there in the top right? You know, does it look right? Is this animation running right? You know, you have to like, there's a lot of things in games you have to actually look at the screen yourself as a human being or listen to a sound effect, for example, and see if it sounds right or look at the screen and be like, okay, that's out of place. There's so many things like that that just are, it's, if there is a way to unit test that, then I don't know how to do it. Okay, so we can unlock an envelope. I'm talking about functional testing. Uh huh. Oh, so okay. That's what no, there's. There's unit testing, and then there's functional testing. Uh. So yeah, and I, I think it's kind of hard to write a lot of things as unit tests for video games. I mean, there are there are a lot of like underlying engine things you can do. But those aren't the important things you need tested all the time. You, so that that's why it's important to have beta player beta testers, in my opinion. Let's create an envelope. 
Why is it locking an envelope? Okay, so it's freeing it right there. Yeah. What's up, Zilton? Yeah, controller room. We'll see if I can get it working in the next seven minutes. I'm about to get going and have some dinner here. I'm trying to... There's something wrong with the some little call. I have no idea what's wrong with the parameter I'm sending to this function to create a force feedback effect on Mac. I've got it working on Linux. i got it working on Windows. Um, so, but Mac is kind of more involved than both of those. So, I'm using SDL. I'm looking at SDL's code and seeing how they're doing it. Uh, okay, so it does free it. Why does it free it? Why did? Why doesn't it just create? Why doesn't it just use a? Oh, because it's. Free effect. Oh. Because it can go out of scope. Okay. That's why it's doing it that way. It could go out of scope, so it malocks it. Well, I guess we should do the same thing then, should we? Malock. Wait, so where where does it actually stop using free effect, free FF effect? Oh, update effect, haptic effect. Where does it update the effect? New effect. Okay, so when error effect done. Okay, so it doesn't delete the effect either. It keeps the effect by default. If it if it returns FF okay, then is it? Are we ready? Uh huh. Okay. All right. I'm gonna shut the stream down then. Well. I uh, couldn't get it working today on today's stream, but it's close. Basically what I got to do to finish this is to figure out what parameters I'm sending that's wrong to this whole FF device create effect. So what I was just trying to figure out there was whether or not the FF effect structure is kept over time. And I think that it is. It's a locking this whole effect. And then if it returns FF OK, it just returns zero. So it hasn't freed the effect. Yeah. OK, so there you go. Yeah, see you, Summer Taco. See you, Zilton. See you, everybody. Blair Salad. Have, have a great night, everybody. Um, Thanks for watching, and I'll uh, catch you all next time.